Welcome to this video. I'm going to talk about the high levels of vitamin D deficiency in the UK. In other words, that many people in the UK have very low levels of vitamin D. We know this is the case in the States. We've looked at this several times. Here's some specific information from the United Kingdom. The situation's similar in many parts of the world because we basically have a vitamin D deficiency pandemic. So let's start off with the latest thinking from the scientists and people in my country. Now, um, there's not enough evidence that vitamin D supplements uh, protect people against COVID-19, an expert panel says. That's the headline from the BBC. No great fan of the BBC, but here they are simply reporting what this panel says. And this panel comes from the Institute for Health and Care Excellence. Sounds good. Excellence bit sounds good, doesn't it? Of Public Health England and the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition, Scientific Advisory Group on Nutrition. And they've come to a conclusion. And the conclusion they've come to is more research is needed. I mean, dear me, I stopped. I, I used to mark a lot of um, degree and master's level dissertations. And at the end of it, all the students were putting more that research is needed. Well, well, that's always true. So I told them to stop it and stop people from putting that in the end of the essays because it's just a waste of a sentence. It's always true. And yet that's what this panel has come up with. More research is needed. Imagine that. Anyway, they go on to say there's insufficient evidence. Uh, advice to take daily supplement this winter to keep bones and muscles healthy. Now, they do advise this. And they're currently advising uh, 10 micrograms, which is 400 international units per day. Now, we've known this since, not me personally, but uh, it was a couple of years after when I learned it. Uh, but uh, the, uh, Adolf Windass, famous German chemist, won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1928. Uh, for his discovery of uh, vitamin D and its role in bone health. We know this. We know that lack of vitamin D and calcium can lead to rickets. We're not talking about this. This is something completely different. And, and yet they are still talking about this discovery from 1928. Adolf was a very reputable uh, German citizen who had great difficulties in the 1930s and 40s, but that's a separate story. Um, so we've known that since this Nobel Prize was awarded way back in 1928. Eight. So Dr. Paul Crisp from, I think he's from NICE, he's one of these big doctor types. I think he's from the National Institute of, let's get the wording right, uh, Institute for Health and Care Excellence, which sounds excellent. Uh, but he says, we are continuing to monitor evidence as it is published and we will review and update guidance if necessary. Now I would have thought at this level he would be commissioning research because I, I, my impression was we were in a healthcare emergency. Let me rephrase that. People are dying. But he, he's waiting for more evidence to, to come along. Um, now, of course, an emotional reaction at this point is tempting. Um, but of course, we never have emotional reactions on this channel. Well, almost never. We do this. We follow the evidence wherever it leads. So rather than start ranting about that, let's just look at some evidence. Now, has, has the British University stepped up to address this problem? Uh, as you might expect. Uh, no, uh, but the University of South Australia has. And they've just published this paper in November, just the end of November, just a few weeks ago. Determinants of vitamin D deficiency in the UK, published in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition. A bit of an awkward one, this, because it's paywalled, but I've managed to get the information. Um, that's another thing I'd really quite like to have a rant about, journals that are maintaining paywalls. Anyway, that's a separate issue. Um, most of the leading medical journals, thankfully for the COVID articles, are not. Anyway, this is work from the University of South Australia. Now, what the heck do the University of South Australia know about what's going on in the UK? Well, the answer is they have accessed... They've used their initiative from 12,000 miles away in Australia and they've accessed the UK Biobank and I've just flicked onto their website here. 
Biobank is a large-scale biomedical database and research resource containing in-depth genetic and health information from half a million UK participants. The database is regularly augmented with additional data and is globally accessible to approved researchers undertaking vital research into the most common and life-threatening diseases. It's a major contributor to the advancement of modern medicine and treatment and has enabled several scientific discoveries uh, that improve human health. Now, if you bump into anyone from the um, from the uh, Institute for Health and Care Excellence, you might want to tell them that this uh, this database exists, because the Australians have certainly discovered it. Now, let's look at what they've said using UK biobank data. So, s several publications relating to this. Um, and, and that's the reference for the, the biobank data where you can look at it in great detail. Uh, severe vitamin D deficiency remains an issue throughout the UK according to this paper. That's the title of the paper. So cross-ethnic analysis of the prevalence and determinants of vitamin D deficiency. In other words, what ethnicity groupings have vitamin D deficiency in the UK and what is determining that? Why, why are they deficient if indeed they are deficient? We need to look at the data to see if they are, if there is deficiency. Um, now, they, they've taken deficiency as less than 25 nanomoles, equal to or less than 25 nanomoles per litre. Now, in the United States, they would normally take uh, normal as being 50 to 125 uh, nanomoles per litre. So this team um, in Australia have, take, have set the bar remarkably low. Um, I would say people in the high 20s and certainly even people with 30 are still deficient or higher. Um, but but that, so they've set this bar low. So um, in other words, people with higher levels of vitamin D with this could potentially still be deficient. So, so their data is going to be quite conservative because of the set that this bar low. So in the United States, they would norm normally say 50 to... Uh, one, two, five is normal. So 25 is, is well low, according to a lot of reference points from around the world. And of course, it's looking at the uh, 25 uh, OH vitamin D, the, the uh, calcifidiol, which is the active form of vitamin D in the blood. So when, when you eat your vitamin D2 and your vitamin D3 in tablets, your ordinary tablets like that, it takes several days up to a week for your liver to convert that to this active form which is the, the calcifidiol, which is the, the, the levels in the blood that they're looking at. So they've set the bar here remarkably uh, low. Um, so that's only equivalent to 10 nanograms per mil, because remember the conversion is 2.5, isn't it? So it's times 2, 2.5 to convert nanograms per mil into nanomoles per litre. I wish the world would agree on one way of doing this. It's very, it's not confusing, but you, it's... Uh, Prolongs the process. Right, UK biobank data, 440,581 people. Not a bad sample size, to be quite honest. This is a remarkably good sample size. Now, uh, let's look at what they have uh, come up with. Um, now, what they did was the, obviously, uh, the data on vitamin D levels for everyone is not there. But what they did was they came up with people on the database. And of those of that grouping, 415,000 identified as white European British in the UK. Uh, just under 8,000 identified as Asian ethnicity, ancestry. 7,602 identified as black African ancestry, Afro-Caribbean, African ancestry originally. 1,383 identified as Chinese and 6,473 identified as mixed race. Excellent sample size. You can get really good stats from these kind of numbers. So, what was the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency? How common was this? Well, it varied between summer and winter. So, uh, perhaps 90% of the vitamin D in most people comes from the sunshine. About 10% comes from diet. So you'd expect people to have higher levels in summer than they would in uh, winter time, especially if you're going outside, getting some clothes off, getting some overall body exposure. 
Um, and that's what they found. So Asian ancestry people, 57.2% um, of these were deficient in vitamin D, albeit this very low bar. So the real number that's deficient is probably way higher than that. You know, if you set this number at uh, 30 or 35 nanomoles per litre, that number would probably go up to 70 or 80 percent. But using this low bar, 57.2 percent, are deficient in winter or spring. Of course, spring, you've used up all the winter supplies. Uh, 51 percent in summer or autumn. So a little less than uh, most black Americans or Hispanic Americans. Um, but the bar here is set very low. So it would set the bar to a higher level. Obviously, those percentages would have been higher and more people would have appeared to be uh, deficient. Black African ancestry, 38.5 uh, in winter and spring, 30.8%, uh, 31% in summer or autumn, so about a third. So over half of Asian ancestry, over a third uh, of black African ancestry. Expand this out to the whole country. We are talking about a lot of people here. A lot of people is below 25 um, nanomoles per litre. That's below 10 nanograms per mil. These are very, very low levels that high percentages of the population have. Um, mixed ancestry, 36.5, uh, 22.5. Chinese, Chinese ancestry, still quite a few. And white European um, 17.5 in winter and spring, 5.9 in summer. But again, if they'd put that up to a more reasonable number of, uh, you know, a high level of vitamin D in the blood, I think you'd probably end up with about 30% being deficient, even in even in um, people with uh, European ancestry. Now, this is what we would expect to find because the original humans that migrated north into Europe um, were, were dark-skinned. We, we know this, Ch Cheddar Gorge Man. Uh, was found uh, in a cave in Cheddar Gorge in, in England um, 15,000 years ago. They looked at his DNA and he had blue eyes and dark coloured skin. So the reason that Northern Europeans have become white is so they can get vitamin D. That's the main reason for being lighter coloured skin. So th th these, these, these findings aren't surprising. Um, that evolutionary pressure has been there. Um, now... So that, that's pretty clear for, for, from, from, um, from, the, from these racial groups. You don't need me to tell you these are the racial groups that are dying at a much faster rate and getting more severe than everyone else. In America, it's almost uh, three to one. Uh, black, black, uh, black African American people are dying about three times more than, 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 than white, American, white Americans. This, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. And, and yet, and yet, that they're saying insufficient evidence. Anyway, stick to the facts. Need to all of the evidence. Okay? Not resort to emotions. Although it is hard when you are watching people suffering unnecessarily. You know that, that you know that, that that's. A, I'm, I'm not going to become emotional. I promise. But I'll just tell you one thing. I I have been in many uh, resuscitation attempts with many critically ill patients after accidents, after disease. And uh, we, we go through a process of resuscitation and uh, sometimes the patient survives, what we say we get them back, other times they don't. And um, a few times I've had to tell relatives that their loved one has not survived. And what we always say, but we did everything we could, you know, everything possible was done. We did absolutely everything we could and yet tragically, we still lost your loved one, but we did everything. You know, we got the anaesthetist down, we got the cardiologist down. We we did the we did the works, and yet sadly, you know, despite us doing everything. But but in this case, we're not doing everything. We're simply not doing everything. Anyway, um, participants with uh, higher socioeconomic deprivation. It's a bit of a double negative here. Uh, more likely to have a uh, deficiency. In, in other words, people from more deprived uh, socioeconomic. Now, I don't like I don't like these classifications. I make no mistake of that. So, but but f from what 
sociologists would describe as people from more deprived backgrounds is they have a much higher level of vitamin D deficiency. And the significance of that is, is massive. You know, the chances of that result arising by chance are, oh, I don't know, minus 300. That's billions, billions to one, billions to one. But that result arose by chance. And again, this is something that I just find intolerable. And it's a global problem that, that poorer people uh, suffer more than, than better off people. It's true throughout the world. And, and it's true within this survey in the UK. This is just a, an intolerable situation that uh, people can buy. OK, not literally buy health and life, but you know what I mean. People, people who lack these resources uh, die earlier and have more disease. This is... Um, this is a major failure of healthcare if, if I have not taken sufficient measures uh, to, to try and rectify that situation. Um, this pattern was more apparent amongst white European ancestry. Okay, I, I, in other words, the, the, the disparity with socioeconomic uh, deprivation was more pronounced in white people than in African and Asian origins, according to this paper. So um, I, I'm getting fairly convinced this is a real problem, aren't you? Um, now, um, remember we talked to Rahul, um, our colleague from um, studying in Germany, is actually from uh, um, Kerala in India. Uh, I think he's from Kerala. Sorry, I've got it wrong, Rahul. Uh, anyway, he noticed that people in Kerala, where they eat a lot of fish, got much less severe disease and much lower death rates in the 1918-19 pandemic. Uh, that's what got him interested in vitamin D. So if you do eat a lot of fish, especially fish livers, that does contain uh, vitamin uh, vitamin D and oily fish it contains. It contains vitamin D. Um, but regular consumption of oily fish was associated with reduced odds of vitamin D deficiency across all ethnicities. Not surprising because it increases the amount that comes from the diet making up somewhat for the amount that's not gained in the sunshine. Um, but we can get, as, as far as I understand it, all the vitamin D we need from the sunshine if we get the exposure. Uh, Asians are less likely to eat fish or use vitamin D supplements compared to other ethnicities. Interesting. Now, I have noticed that when I go for my vitamin Ds, um, it's my ordinary vitamin D tablets. Probably see them better from that camera. There we go. Oh, the light's not good. Twenty-five. Yeah, there we go. Twenty-five micrograms. That's a thousand international units. Vitamin D. So I'm currently taking two of those a day. I have noticed that um, when you go to buy these in the often in the afternoon, often the supermarkets shut out, sold out rather. So even though the government is not leading the way, many people are are um, are take much many more people are taking vitamin D supplements now, which makes sense in the light of the research we're looking at. To me. Um, so Asians less likely to take supplements so that's a message to get out there isn't it outdoor time in summer was less effective in black African than white Europeans obviously because uh, the darker skin is going to make the vitamin D much more slowly um, other risk factors living further north as I do big risk factor uh, indoor employment obviously you're not getting the sun computer time and games is now a real factor now the professor from Australia uh, who was in charge of this. Um, these are direct quotes. The severity of vitamin D deficiency is concerning. We agree, Professor. Thank you. Um, especially with the high rates of COVID-19 infections in Europe and elsewhere. In the Northern Hemisphere this winter, we agree. Thank you for pointing it out to us, all the way from Australia. Um, clinical trials have shown that vitamin D supplements are beneficial in the preventing of respiratory infections and even mortality. Correct. Vitamin D is not expensive and the doses which have the greatest benefit are those that can you can acquire over the counter from local pharmacies. I actually get mine from the supermarket, it's cheaper. Given the COVID-19 pandemic, now is really the time for all who may be affected to take action. We agree completely. Okay, now um, I did have another paper to discuss with you but I think that's probably enough for one video um, 
I think that gives pretty hard evidence that even setting the bar very low, the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in the UK is high. Not enough people have enough vitamin D. And it's uh, very easy to correct that with uh, supplements. But um, all our scientists have advised us to carry on with this much, much lower dose despite the massively high levels of deficiency I have just presented evidence for. Right, um, there is another clinical one there on patients in hospital, but I think I'll, I'll do that another time. I don't want to go on too long. Now, before I finish today, two more things to do. Um, th th that, that's, that's this video finished. Uh, but Mateki, my technician, has asked me to uh, show you, um, I'm sure you all know this already, but He's insisted that I show you how to download the books from uh, on, onto your mobile phone, um, which is handy. So it is my phone here. So you just click on YouTube, and 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 th th this is yesterday's video that I'm on here. So that's uh, that was yesterday's video, and you just go into the description, and in the description you have uh, this this download link here. I'll put it into today's video as well. And open with Chrome just once. Now I'm rubbish with computers, so if I can do this, anyone can do it. Uh, your one-time ebook download. Now you've got to go through this screen every time. Um, if you want to donate to the project, do so if you can afford to. If you can't afford to, please don't. Uh, so you click on that. Now the one, the ones with the um, the, the most user-friendly. So th those top two are the ones that are most user-friendly for computers. So if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to um, download it for your uh, computer to print out some PDFs, for example, then you would use that one. If you want to download it for your phone, then you would use that one. So we click on that, download, and there we go. It's done it. So that's the. Uh, there we have the full textbook. This is the physiology version. Now, uh, Dave has kindly. Um, no, wait a minute. I've done, I've done something wrong here. There's a, there's a way you can go onto this and you can get. Um, I've forgotten how to do it. I, I, I'm useless at technical things. Is it something to do with that? And anyway, there's a simple way that you can do it to. Um, to to go 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 straight to. Um, there's like a contents, an e-contents thing, so you can go straight to whatever you want to uh, to go straight to. Anyway, I, I'll show I'll show you how to. So well, anyway, I th no, I think that's just the download. Actually, I think that's what I'm doing wrong. So so that's just the download thing. So um, what we do is that, that then once it's downloaded, yeah, that's it. You go on, you go on to uh, that one just a PDF reader and, th and that's where that's where I'll just have been uh, reading uh, last time um, so that's about the skin there and then yeah that's right I've got it now so then you go on to that one there then you can go on to the contents there and then you can go straight to any chapter you want so if you want to know about the blood go straight to the blood and we're now at the blood hopefully yeah, there we go. Components of the blood. Blood consists of two basic components. The first is the fluid component referred to as the plasma. There you go. And it's got all the diagrams. All these diagrams are just simple ones I've drawn myself. So anyway, that, that, that's that's what you do. And then the same, you can do the same for the um, the same for the pathophysiology book as well. Um, so there, there's the Campbell's pathophysiology notes. So again, you can go to uh, contents and you've got all the chapters I've done it oh yeah contents I've got all the chapters so if you'd like to know about um, what would you like to know about if you'd like to know about diabetes we're now on the diabetic chapter I think we can now yeah read about diabetes so there you go it just um, you can download that it's on your phone Right.
Sorry if that was a bit boring, but my technician insisted that I give you that mini lesson. Right, we'll put the link there as well. So it is quite handy having it on your phone, so you know you can be waiting for a bus or something and start reading pathophysiology. There you go. Now, um, we've shown this many times. It's the poster from Liz about the darker coloured skin making vitamin D more slowly. Good for protecting from sunburn. So that's uh, quite an important um, infographic. And, and Liz did another one. Um, this one was about um, the, the idea of vitamin D being an immunomodulator, stopping the fluid collecting in the alveoli by stopping too much um, too much in, inflammatory response. Right, just a few of your pictures uh, from you now, your experiences of the pandemic. Actually, do, building it's quite an interesting series, this. Um, so this one is, um, th this is uh, Michael from Sweden. And apparently this distance here is a play on the words in Swedish for cow. So anyway, so, so it shows the social distancing is being taught in Sweden, which is good. Ah, this is excellent. Please leave the doors open to ensure this space remains well ventilated. National Trust. Well done, National Trust. Were all other venues following suit, it would be good. This is from Robert in Zimbabwe. Temperature checks and things before we go into pharmacies. Uh, what's it saying? A bit about it. Temperature checks will be done on all individuals entering the store. The individuals entering the store will be asked to sanitise their hands. Good, yeah, all common sense stuff. And a few of the features there on the bottom. So good to see that prominently displayed in public in Zimbabwe. Uh, this is Ron's truck. And Ron's truck is this new normal where he's got all this equipment and sanitizers around. And Ron's a long time viewer. Thank you for watching. <coughs> Thank you for watching. Um, now is that us for today? That is us for today. Um, such an important message about vitamin D. So look in the mirror. Look at your skin tone. Ask your GP, of course, if it will do a vitamin D check on your blood. That's the ideal way to do, to do it. Go, go to your doctor, get him to check your vitamin D levels. Then he can titrate the exact dose that would be ideal for you. Um, unfortunately, it's not happening as often as we would uh, as we would like. But uh, talk talk to your friends, point out the levels of deficiency, um, the evidence for the levels of deficiency. And of course, we know, and I'll 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 put I'll put a lot, I'll put a list of other videos and things we've done on this where we've looked at evidence, which in my view, is just overwhelming, that higher vitamin D levels are associated with better outcomes in many infectious diseases, including COVID nineteen. Lower levels of vitamin D are associated with worse outcomes. Indeed, including potentially death. Okay, thank you for watching, of course.